How's it going everyone? I'm Jeremy and welcome to another video where I show you how to do simple movement in GameMaker. In this video, we're going to be looking at the platformer behavior and how we can actually make that uh, in GameMaker very easily. So this is by far Construct's bread and butter. Everything about making a platformer in Construct is super simple and you can do it in under 30 seconds. So what I have here is a sprite and a tiled background. I will click on the sprite and add the platform behavior and then I'll click on the tiled background and add the solid behavior and I'm done. That took less than 30 seconds to make a platformer type game or prototype and there's no competing against that. If that's why you don't want to use GameMaker, I completely understand. That is extremely fast and you don't have to understand what went into that or what goes into these behaviors. But that's where GameMaker comes in and I'm going to show you that it's actually easier than you might think. So out of the box, the platform behavior comes with a max speed setting, an acceleration, deceleration, jump strength, gravity, fall speed, can we double jump? how long are we in the air for, and are we using the default controls, or do we need to reprogram them? And all of these things are great, but wouldn't it be nice to know how to do that on your own? Uh, I think it gives you more control, and I just want to show you that it may not take you know less than 30 seconds, but it's definitely not going to take you more than two minutes to get the same thing up and running uh, in GameMaker. We're not going to go over all of these today, but I'm going to show you just how we can replicate the basics of this. So in GameMaker, I already have a player sprite and a ground sprite, and I will make the corresponding objects for the player, and we will go from there. So I will assign the sprite for the player, and I will add a step event. Now, in the last video, we used the X coordinate and the Y coordinate to move around. In this, we're actually gonna use the built-in H speed and V speed uh, variables. Now, some people are completely against using that and they make their own, and that's probably going to be the way to go in the future, but there's nothing wrong with using them just to get your game up and running. If the idea is to make it as fast to use as Construct, or just to make it as simple to use as Construct, then this is definitely the way to just to get started with it. So I'm going to write a simple keyboard check for if we're holding down the A key. Then instead of using you know x and then minus equals, we're going to use the h speed built-in variable. Now when I set this to a negative number, it's automatically going to move it left. And then I can select this, duplicate it, and make it a positive number, and now it's going to move it right. So let me go into my room, and let me bring in our player object and hit play. So now we should actually have left and right movement just like we did in the other video but now we're using the H speed variable but still pretty basic so the only thing that's happening here is we're not stopping we have no way of slowing down and let's go ahead and fix that we're gonna add a create event so when our player is created it's going to come with a built-in friction and I'll make this 0.1 so what friction does, or what the built-in friction does in GameMaker, is it's going to slow it down if it's not zero. So whenever we're not increasing the speed, that's when it's going to actually start to slow it down. It's going to actually slow down the speed of our object. So watch what happens. So when I hit the D key, check it out, we have some friction. After I stop holding it down, it says, okay, we're no longer incrementing. Let's lower that speed until we hit zero. And the more we increase this number, the faster it'll slow down. Let's hit play again, just like that. Pretty straightforward. But this isn't platformer movement just yet. We need one other thing and we need to be able to jump. So I'll duplicate that by selecting it and hitting control D. And then I'll change it from the H speed to the V speed. Now, the one thing is uh, five is actually gonna point us downwards. So we need to make this negative. And since we're going to mimic construct, I'm going to use a huge number so we actually really jump. The final bit to this is we need some gravity. So I'm going to put in a gravity of 1, just like that, and hit play. Again, using these built-in variables, people don't seemingly like to do that as much these days. They like to program it even more on their own and make it more custom and pixel perfect. But 
if you're brand new to this and you have no idea what any of that stuff means, then just start here and, and go from there as you make your game. Okay, cool. So now I can hit the W key and we can jump and I can move around and all that stuff works, which is pretty cool. Uh, one thing I realized that I did that I should change is this is uh, just to check if we're holding it down. I should make this a pressed event. That way when we just tap it, that's when we're jumping. But now we need something to collide to to finish off our platformer uh, game here. So what I need to do is I can right click it actually, or I could hit Alt O to make another object. I need the ground. So I'm going to assign it the sprite for the ground. And now again, another one of those things that a lot of game maker people don't like to do, so they're kind of reluctant to tell you about it, I guess these days, is I'm just going to use the solid behavior. It works totally fine. Um, I think eventually it gets a little too intense for the computer, but honestly, I've never noticed that at all. Um, so again, there are other ways to do this. This is just the super simple way. So now that we've declared that this object is going to be solid, we still need a way to collide with it. And that's gonna happen in our very first collision event. So when we collide with the ground, we need something to just say, okay, let's stop moving. So what we're gonna do is just say vSpeed equals zero. There are other things that we can do to make this work. And this is not even the best solution uh, as I forgot to put the ground in. Let me do that, that would be smart. Um, but this is going to work just to mimic exactly what I did in Construct. And while I had to talk and explain it, uh, this really doesn't take longer than a minute and a half to get up and running. And there we go. We have the exact same thing. No, we didn't limit the, the jump yet or any of that stuff, but that can come later, you know? And this doesn't feel so terrible to me. You know, if I'm just trying to give you a prototype and just trying to get my idea out there by learning Game Maker, this is a great way to get started. So there we have really simple platformer movement. Uh, I don't want to go further into this because there are so many other tutorials out there. Um, I will just show you that instead of just stopping the V speed altogether, and I know for a fact that this is not recommended at all, you can do something like this. And this is just going back to the point where GameMaker language has a lot of cool things built in. So move bounce solid is actually going to bounce us, which is pretty cool. I know it's not recommended to put it in the collision event, so we're not gonna do that, but I just wanted to show you that. And finally, if you're ever confused on anything, if you wanna understand more about friction and gravity or H-speed and V-speed and how it works, the best part about this is the documentation is built into GameMaker. So all you have to do is middle mouse click on it and it'll pop it up right in the documentation and you can read all about it and read an example on how it works. I find that to be extremely useful, especially when I don't know the technical bits and the inner workings of it, which uh, to Game Maker's credit, you know, we don't get in Construct. I don't really know how this works behind the scenes, but I'm happy that it does work because there's no doubt that this is extremely fast. But I hope that this has cleared it up, just showed you how easy it is to kind of take something that you might think is a little bit out of your knowledge and you can program it yourself. Thanks so much for watching this video. I have a couple more planned. Leave a comment below and tell me what you think of this series uh, and tell me what you think of Game Maker and if you're going to start using it or not. Until then, I will see you in the next one.